Hi, I'm Lucy Reid, Ag Tech Extension Officer at South Australian Department of Primary Industries and Regions. We're here at a property in Port Arthur in the northern York Peninsula and we're here to see the Rubicon 9000 sprayer for Hardy with the Geo Select technology. Currently we're here with Andrew Snowball and Heath Thompson from Hardy. So for all the farmers and that out there that love things like horsepower, yep. how many horses are we talking under that hood? So the Rubicon's got 375 horsepower. It's got a road speed of up to 50 k's an hour. It's a self-propelled unit, so combined all in one tank, boom, the whole lot. There are options on boom sizes from 36 metres to 54 metres, which I believe is the largest, with different nozzle technologies that go on to that. So this is assembled in Adelaide, South Australia, and the Geo Select part is obviously designed and, and made um, also in Adelaide, South Australia, but for Australian conditions. So the only additional parts over and above a normal sprayer are the four GPS units. So you've got two in the centre and then one on either boom. That measures the angle of the boom as opposed to just um, assuming it's a rigid structure. Um, and then this one here has got 49 individual sections of a metre wide that it's got air lines and, and a 12 volt electric system. So, well, and the associated wiring and stuff for that. But that is the only additional parts. There's no, no extra CAN systems, no, no extra cameras, no extra power systems. So I guess one of the things we wanted to do again is not put so much hardware on the boom. So um, it's easier for maintenance and fixing yeah. and yeah. Yeah, I guess it comes back to that design where we, we want the farmer to be able to fix the machine, if there is a problem, fix the machine themselves or have the best chance to do that. Hopefully with your box of tools and stuff like that, you can make a few adjustments and get going again. Each section of a metre wide is uh, actuated uh, pneumatically or by, by air, which is um, done through a solenoid, which is a 12 volt solenoid. So. And can I just ask why the four GPS receivers? Uh, yep. Is four a good number or do you need more or less? Or? So there's two in the middle cent uh, centre section to get a, a very accurate heading mm -hmm. and then to either side to know where the boom wings are. So yeah, so the, you actually see in the in the user interface as we swing around, which we will, that you actually see the boom swing around. The boom is not actually one rigid part; it actually flexes. And in bigger booms, it flexes even more. So, you know, if I was to push that back there, it actually is it at the end there? It's a couple meters. So that can actually be the difference between hitting and missing a selective spraying operation some camera sprayers yeah whatever is in front of it if you put wave a bit of you know grass in front of it it will spray um, this knows where it has and hasn't sprayed so if you are turning and one of the booms moves backwards over that area it won't spray that area so Andrew just talk us through GeoSelect what's the process from start to finish with this in summer the first thing that the farmer would do is get a, a drone operator to come out and fly the paddock so that would capture an image of the paddock um, that's all then processed and put into a diner map, which is basically a weed map of your paddock. So everything is there um, prior to actually moving the sprayer into the paddock. So all the decisions about how much to use, whether you want to actually spray the paddock, how fast you want to go, which way you want to run your AB lines, is, it can already be determined before you get in the paddock. Once that uh, you've got that data, it's either transferred by the cloud or a, a USB stick or something something similar um, into the sprayer and then it's as easy as just rolling up, turning it on and driving around. Andrew is about to start the Rubicon up. Okay, so I'll start the machine, fold it up and then you, I'll then give you a yell and then uh, I'll unfold it. The sensor that we have can pick weeds up down to about five cent piece and what we realised that when we started using this high resolution data that um, Having a single GPS antenna on the roof of a sprayer was not sufficient accuracy wise to work with the high resolution data that we had. So um, you'll see on the boom as it passes through that you've got four GPS antennas on the, on the boom. Mm -hmm. And that, what that's doing is measuring where the nozzles are down to a centimetre mm -hmm. um, and allowing the, um, the scan data to be most effective in the sprayer. It's particularly useful to have selective spraying on, on large booms because of the amount of area you can cover. Um, you save on fuel costs and amount of hours on the paddock over a 36, for example. Um, you're able to get a lot more done in a lot shorter period of time. Okay. So at the moment, we're going to spray this paddock with 100 litres a hectare. Um, and the Geo Select will work out where that 100 litres a hectare has got to go and where it doesn't have to go. 
So there's various views on the on the Rubicon, um, but we'll get going there. So we get rolling. Okay, so we'll just turn our bit spraying. And get our boom height going. Now our map in there. And as you can see that the boom switch on and off. As well as the uh, as well as the boom yaw. So you'll see the booms move on the screen as well. Oz as out in the paddock. So at the moment we're doing only 10 k's an hour, but we'll speed it up from there. So we're using uh, NORAC auto height on the boom. Um, it's important with a, a, a large boom like that to have some auto leveling um, capability. The NORAC uh, system uses ultrasonic um, and we've used it and work quite closely with Topcon to um, implement the system on our, on our large booms. The nozzles are going off um, using the drone data. I don't know if you can see in the camera but we've got LED lights that turn on when the uh, nozzles activate um, and we do that in the evening when the light starts to come down a bit, it's, it makes it a lot easier to see what's spraying and what's not. On this particular Rubicon, we're running two nozzles per section um, at a 500 mil spacing. So you've got one meter per section um, going off at any one time. Because the uh, nozzles are not even fan, uh, the software is configured in such a way that um, you're never half spraying a weed. It's, it's, it's allowing for the, the uneven nature of a, of a traditional nozzle. On this system, we're running two separate spray algorithms. You've got a H-Select system, which is um, able to blanket spray at a varying rate. Um, and you've got a selective spray system, which is a single nozzle out of the four nozzle system. The system knows where it is by the GPS units on the, on, the, on the boom. So when you feed a map into it, it is basically, as you move around the paddock, it, it knows there's a weed coming up. So say 500 metres down there, there's one single weed. It knows that there is a weed coming up and whatever part of the boom passes over that weed, it will command the unit to spray that particular section at that point, whether you're turning, whether you're reversing, whether you're going 25 k's an hour or 3 k's an hour, it doesn't matter. When you pass over that, that weed, it knows it's there and it will turn on the appropriate section. The other thing it lets you do is in heavier areas, it can recommend that there's a heavy area coming up for weeds to slow down and you'll save uh, money. Um, as opposed to, you know, you can have a real like, light section or even nothing for a long time and it can just say, no, nah, do, do 35 until you get to the next area because you're not actually going to spray. Would you say that this was a good system for time efficiency? So it's a little bit of a change in the in the workflow. I guess it's not just jump in the sprayer and you know out you go. Um, but I guess most of the times that we've talked to people that in summer spraying day, farmers know they're going to be spraying well before they actually are going to be spraying. So in that time that you would have the drone operator come out and scan, and then if you're scanning today, say the paddock today, scanning today, then it'd be spraying tomorrow. So with being able to image exactly where your weeds are, so you are spot spraying, what would you say the cost efficiency would be or savings? So if you got all the weeds, pushed it up into the corner, yep. it'd only be one or two percent of the area that you actually need to spray. Um, obviously you, you're going to spray more than that one or two percent because yeah, you're going to have overlaps here and there. I mean what we say is up to 90 but depends on, on what your paddock's like and how many actual weeds you have in there and also how fast you run. The faster you run over that, um, that map, the more you'll spray. The nozzles can only turn on and off in a certain amount of time. So that if there isn't enough time for the nozzle to turn off before the next weed comes up, it will just stay on. 
So you're definitely getting more paddocks per tank yeah, than what you normally yeah. would. Yeah. Less time having to go back to the farm, fill up, you know, put more chemical in and that. Plus strategic decision making is that you actually know what's out there before you get there. So you can plan logistically for chemical deliveries or whatever else is going on rather than, you know, at the moment I'm just buying how many hectares I've got. At the moment it's only fallow weeds that we're picking up, but um, into the future potentially if you can detect it with you know a drone or a sensor or something like that um, then if you can detect fungal and you can map it it will be able to do it. Um, I guess that leads on to the old green on green question um, you know same deal when the when uh, sensors and that are able to pick up reliably um, a green on green so you've got I don't know ryegrass in a, in a wheat paddock or um, something else um, in lentils and you know turnips or whatever you got if that's able to be mapped then this is able to be done so there's no change in hardware on the machine for for doing other applications as long as it can be detected by the imagery done at the start for this rig who would your ideal customer or target market be for the rubicon because of the size um, and the boom width it'd be your large broadacre farmers contractors that sort of thing Thank you, Hardy, for inviting us out to see the Rubicon 9000. Thank you to Paul Jarrett for letting us see your property and utilise it for today. If you'd like to find out more about ag-based technology in South Australia, please head to the Department of Primary Industries and Regions website.